Hi everyone, James Mansell here with yet another video. This is part two of my essential styling supplies that I use in my repertoire. Now I noticed in the first video, I left a few things out. So I decided to make a second part to tell you some more tools that I use for my trade. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is the blow dryer. Now any standard blow dryer will do. I had this pink one, I think I got it from like Walgreens or something, like a drugstore, like CVS or something. I'm pretty sure it was just whatever was available and it was pink, so I got it. But this tool is your best friend, especially the like pieces on it, diffusers and all that stuff. This comes in handy so much, especially if you want to quick dry a wig. Like say you sprayed it with aliens, you have to get out the door. Partner this with the blow dryer. It'll help speed up the process of curing it. Now I have many blow dryers in this house. This is probably my cheapest model I have. Just to let you know that like you can make any blow dryer work, okay? I've had ones, like when I forget my blow dryer on the road, I've used like the really old ones that are like connected to the walls from like the 70s that some hotels have. Anything will work as long as it will produce heat, you can use it. The second thing I wanna talk about are pins. Now pins are essential. I've seen some girls using like sewing pins on their heads and everything. I don't recommend that because they're not as strong as you think they would be to hold a wig on, especially if you're starting to tease it. Here's what I use. Now to pin wigs onto a head, I use what I refer to as floral pins. These little pearl head pins, you can get them online almost anywhere. Like they're pretty easy to come by, but they're just longer floral pins. The longer, the better, honestly. This is one I've got, you know, in a pack of a hundred. Just as many of these as possible. These are great to pin down wigs with. Also, what I use, you wanna do like the squiggly wigs and everything. I got these from Hair by Koji. He sells them on his site in packs. These are long hair pins. And sometimes it's a really intense job for teasing. I'll use these for like toppers or stuff that don't necessarily have lace. I use these on there to like make sure I got a good grip on it. Now, rollers. Rollers are a very tricky thing. Now you can use just about any roller you want to, what you prefer. What I use is wire mesh rollers in varying sizes, depending on what you want. If you're following like a styling guide, they should tell you like the size rollers you need. They come in a variety of sizes and colors are usually how you determine what they are, especially if it's like, um. Diane rollers or something like that. Now, the one I usually use is this pink one. This is like a good size one. You can get these on Amazon. Just look for the pink wire mesh rollers. It'll tell you what they are. Size right here. I use these for like finger waves and stuff like that. If you need like the classic Hollywood set, these are a great go-to. Now, if you need something a little freer, this is another great one. I used to use these for like more 60s kind of styles. The purple wire mesh. I will warn you, that when you use them, be careful not to wrap this one too tightly because the mesh on this is more thin than these ones. Like it's not as strong. And these have a tendency to like bend in and like grip into each other and indent to where it's really hard to get like a good set if you're not careful. So don't wrap this one too tightly. Extra big hair. I haven't gotten the best results with these, but these are good if you want like a really, really loose curl. I don't really recommend them, but I have them in my repertoire in case I need them. So they're there if you need them. Now for tighter, smaller curls, this is a great one to use. I use these in like back section of hair. If I have to like tease it down and make a big fluffy cloud, this is great for the back of the head or if you need like really tight curls. Now the smallest roller, this is gonna get you like a really small one, the yellow ones. I don't really use these for like a full head. It depends on what style you're going for. I generally use these, I have to like spit curls or something on the side of the head like that to get that nice like 60 spit curl or even like, you know, a spiral curl in the front depending on what you're doing or what style, like that Bill Lily spiral, perfect for that. All right, now another curling tool you can use is the perm rod. If you have to do big sections at a time, or if you need a very specific kind of like S wave, these are good for that. Um, I don't use these that often, depends what the style is. I often will use these for like the back of a wig if I have to do what this curler usually does. So I don't have to use so many, or like if I'm running out of pins, I'll generally use like the perm rod for that. But it is a good one to use. Just bear in mind, make sure that roll is tight and make sure it is like cinched in and closed tight because if it's really too loose, it's gonna ruin everything and it won't curl properly. But the perm rod is a good tool to use. Also duckbill clips are your best friend, especially if you're doing finger waves. These are perfect for that. Be careful not to use any kind of wet hairsprays or water with these because these will generally, into my cleavage, because these things have a serious rusting problem. Like whenever I used to do like the squiggly stuff, I generally make sure I take these out because if it stays in there with the gel and the water, you'll get rust marks all over the wig, especially if it's a lighter color. So just take that in consideration. Don't use these combined with water or gels. This is only to keep the style in place after it's already dry. 
Now, final things. I know a lot of people really like using canvas wig blocks to display their wigs on if they're done, or even styrofoam wig heads. I feel like those take up a lot of space. So I try and keep my wig blocks like in a closet until I actually need them. But what I have been turned on to recently are these great collapsible wig stands. You can get them just about anywhere. Like they should be sold online places, but they're great. They have a little circular that goes on top. And when I'm displaying stuff, I use these because they're collapsible. So if a wig sells or if I give a wig away or I decide I don't want it anymore, I can just break the stand down and put it away. Nice and flat, but these are great. Collapsible wig stands, get into them. Now, I hope you enjoyed this shorter video. These are some of the tools I use whenever I'm styling wigs or getting ready to store them. If there's any wig questions you have, leave them down below and maybe I'll do a part three. I know a lot of people have been asking for how I travel with wigs and stuff like that. So I'm always open to talking about that stuff. If you're curious, I'm happy to let you know. Some of the ways I use may shock you, just bear in mind, but these are the tools that I use in my current repertoire when I'm styling wigs. I hope you guys learned something. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. <laughs> Click here and see me style a wig from Daiso or watch part one of the tools I use for hairstyling. Come on, click it, you know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll something, some, just click it, damn it. It's going for a